The same year that President Thomas Jefferson closed the greatest land deal in American history with Napoleon Bonaparte, a far less dramatic and far more common story played out in Little Britain Township in rural Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Lancaster County historical lore suggests that an older, wealthy European-American lumber merchant impregnated his young black house slave, Nancy, and in February 1804, William Whipper was born into a household he shared with four white half-siblings. But where many such beginnings have less than optimal endings, the trajectory of William Whipper's life was anything but ordinary. More than a hundred years before Martin Luther King Jr., William Whipper was advocating for nonviolent protest in the fight for black civil rights and was a key conductor in the Pennsylvania track of the Underground Railroad, shepherding hundreds of fugitive slaves from southern ports of freedom in the north using his modified railroad cars. He attended all six of the 19th century national African-American conventions, was a co-founder of the American Moral Reform Society, and editor of its magazine, The National Reform. He frequently contributed articles and letters to famous abolitionist paper, like The Liberator, The North Star, and The National Anti-Slavery Standard. Although few records exist to paint an accurate picture of Whipper's childhood, the Pennsylvania Center for the Book noted in their biography that Whipper's father requested that his mulatto son have access to a quality education, and the same tutor who taught his white children also instructed William in reading and writing. By the early 1820s, for reasons unknown, Whipper and his siblings had relocated to Philadelphia, where he initially worked steam cleaning clothing. Although Whipper himself wrote little or nothing about his early life, his published literary work leaves little doubt that he put his substantial education to work in the city's literary circles and quickly made a name for himself among the city's black intellectual elite. Here in Philadelphia, the city with the largest free black population of any northern state, Whipper joined a variety of literary groups such as the Colored Reading Society and the Philadelphia Library of Colored Persons and quickly began advocating for the rights of blacks both within Pennsylvania and of those still in southern bondage. Since the ratification of the 14th and 15th Amendments to the U.S. Constitution, we've come to associate the term civil rights with the African-American struggle to secure full and equal political, social, and economic rights. But what does it mean to be a civil rights leader in antebellum America when, according to the U.S. Census, nearly 90% of the nation's African Americans, 3.9 million, were slaves and had no rights at all? Yet it is precisely the struggle to end slavery and to secure the most basic civil rights to life, liberty, and property constitutionally protected for the white citizens in the first eight amendments of the Bill of Rights that clearly defined Whipper and his abolitionist colleagues as civil rights leaders. But the fight for black civil rights in the northern states was in some ways even more sinister than the more obvious fight in the south where slaves had no rights at all. In the north, several states, including New York and Pennsylvania, initially gave suffrage to African-American property holders. However, as the economics of slavery began to take center stage in antebellum politics, even liberal states such as Pennsylvania began to repeal black suffrage laws through changes to the state constitutions in the years leading up to the Civil War, stripping blacks of the rights to vote and leaving them as state citizens, if not federal citizens, without a voice in government. It is the context of this rapidly changing and politically diverse environment in Pennsylvania that William Whipper rose to prominence. Some of his better known political actions include working with Pennsylvania's prominent black businessmen Robert Purvis and James Fortin in 1832 to draft a response to the state's legislature's efforts to restrict the entry of free blacks into the state and to weaken the legal position of those who were sought as fugitive slaves and working as a member of the 1838 delegation who fought changes to the Pennsylvania Constitution, repealing the right of suffrage for African Americans. Throughout his early life, while he was gaining recognition as an intellectual and political figure, Whipper was also playing an increasingly prominent role in what has become known as the National Negro Convention Movement. Although the movement had many agenda items, foremost among them were proposals for black immigration to free Canada in the wake of the rising racial antebellum tensions in the northern states, and a moral reform movement championed heavily by William Whipper. At the center of Whipper's advocacy for moral reform was the core belief that abolition must be achieved through nonviolent means. 
more than a century before Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. became associated with nonviolent protest, William Whipper was taking center stage with this radically controversial and largely unpopular idea. Whipper based his ideas of nonviolence on biblical scripture and cited the experience of the Quakers, whose practice of pacifism had not brought them injury, but rather shielded them from insult and abuse. He recommended a similar course to the colored population of the country. We must, he pleaded, learn on all occasions to rebuke the spirit of violence, both in sentiment and in practice. He applauded the modern abolitionists who were working to overthrow slavery by appeals to reason rather than force of arms, and who were prepared to accept persecution without resorting to violence in their own defense. His ideas were not widely accepted and generated extreme controversy and, in many cases, outright opposition in the free black community. However, it's not Whipper's work as a political figure that has gained him the most fame as a civil rights leader. Rather, it was his work as a major conductor of the Underground Railroad. Throughout the 1830s, Whipper began to build a personal fortune through business connections in the lumber industry. According to his principal biographer, Richard McCormick, Dean of Records College at Rutgers University, in 1834 he had briefly operated a free labor and temperance grocery store in Philadelphia, but by 1835 he had moved to Columbia, Pennsylvania, where he became associated with Stephen Smith, a remarkably successful lumber and coal merchant. When Smith moved back to Philadelphia in 1842, Whipper continued to manage his affairs in Columbia. By 1860, in addition to partnership in Smith's profitable lumber business, Whipper also owned multiple properties in Columbia, Lancaster County, Philadelphia, and Ontario, Canada. Situated on the Susquehanna River close to the Maryland border, Columbia was an important crossing point for fugitive slaves, and Whipper was extremely active in the operations of the Underground Railroad there. In a written account just prior to his death, which he submitted to William Stills for his 1878 book, The Underground Railroad, Whipper estimated that he moved hundreds of fugitives from the South to points in northern states in Canada, using specially modified railroad cars on the Philadelphia and Columbia Railroad. According to a historical placard in Lancaster County, businesses built their own rail cars and paid fees to couple the cars with state-owned steam engines. Smith and Whipper owned several rail cars for transporting lumber to and from their lumber yard in Columbia, and each car was modified with a false wall at one end. According to the placard, fugitive slaves climbed into the concealed compartment and stayed for about the eight hours that it took to travel from Columbia to Philadelphia. Whipper estimated that he invested more than $1,000 annually between 1847 and 1860 in moving fugitive slaves. After the Civil War, in 1866, Whipper joined Frederick Douglass as a member of the small African-American delegation appointed by black leaders to meet with Andrew Johnson in order to persuade the president to reconsider his veto of the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and discuss the lack of suffrage in the South. Finally, in 1870, Whipper was appointed to the head of the Pennsylvania branch of the Freedmen's Bank, an appointment that ended in disaster in 1873 when the institution failed due to gross management of finances by its white directors. Although a subsequent investigation found no irregularities in Whipper's management of the branch, documentation suggests that his personal finances may have been adversely affected by the bank's collapse. After a lingering illness, Whipper died in his Lombard Street residence on March 9, 1876, leaving behind a legacy of selfless labor in the struggle for freedom and civil rights for African Americans across the country.